Welcome to the Mean Lady Talking Podcast. This is the podcast that tackles tough questions about relationships, life, love, and loss. It may not be the advice you want, but it's probably the advice you need. And now here's your host, grief therapist, motivational speaker, relationship expert, best-selling author, and attorney, the not really mean, mean lady herself, Susan J. Elliott. Good day, everybody. This is Susan Elliott, host of the Mean Lady Talking Podcast, and today is episode 23, Tuesday show. And even though I just did an episode on grief, somebody asked me to discuss recycling, and I think that's a very good idea because it really seems like people in the Facebook group and my readers and my listeners, they all seem to go through recycling sort of at the same time. And there's a lot of different things that can trigger recycling, so... We are going to talk about a few of them today. C.S. Lewis wrote an incredible book called A Grief Observed. It was also a movie called Shadowlands with Anthony Hopkins. And I, I saw it with my husband, Michael. It was absolutely a wonderful movie. A Grief Observed is really a great book. But C.F. Lewis said, grief is a spiral, but am I going up or coming down? And that's exactly how it feels. In Getting Back Out There, I write about the five R's. These are roadblocks on the dating road. One of them is recycle because dating often triggers recycling. But you don't need to be dating to recycle. There are many other things that can trigger recycling, such as an anniversary date, the ex's birthday, moving into your own place, selling a house, going on a trip you were supposed to go on together, overhearing something about his or her new life, finding out they're in another relationship, something to that effect. There's many things that can trigger recycling. And recycling often happens after we've been thinking that we're starting to get over it. So it can be very upsetting to go back there once again. And then there's other times where absolutely nothing triggers recycling. You wake up one morning, you're a mess. You don't know why. I've studied grief theory for over 20 years. I've written all my academic theses on grief, including my undergrad honors thesis, my graduate thesis, and my law school thesis. I've read the literature for many years now. And most people who've read my stuff know that I don't like to use the word stages. I use the word phases. There are several different ways of framing the process, depending on which researchers you're reading about. But the one thing that researchers do agree on is that grief varies wildly from person to person, depending on the type of loss you've had, your history, your history with grieving, environmental and social factors. Over these years, I've researched the various ways in which experts label and assign the quote unquote work of grief. Even though one may say, feel your feelings and another will say, let yourself grieve. The roadmap is often the same. To work through a loss, you must acknowledge that there was a loss. You must feel the emotional pain about that loss. And you must work on restructuring your life and your environment to adapt to that loss. Finally, you must accept the loss and integrate the experience into your life. When I read the grief literature, I noticed that breakup grief was astonishingly missing from the literature, which is why I insisted on the grief chapter in Getting Past Your Breakup. Publishers Weekly, which is the voice of publishing, called Getting Past Your Breakup an acclaimed debut. And the reason why the book has received so many accolades and lands on so many best breakup books of all time list is because of the acknowledgement that breakup grief is very, very real. For many people going through a breakup, it's just not about this breakup. It's about rejection. It's about abandonment. It's about insecurity. It's about fear. When we're going through the early phases of grief in a breakup, you tend to be in this state of heightened sensitivity and you become very emotional, sometimes at the drop of a hat. You don't even know why. You often feel confused and disorganized, like the world is moving beneath your feet. Who am I? Where am I going? When does the pain end? 
And if you feel your feelings and allow them to come, it will. But it will also feel as if you've had the wind totally knocked out of your sails. And while you're doing this, you have to start the restructuring process. You have to build a life without the person you lost and all the secondary losses could be their friends, family, your house, your neighborhood, whatever. But there are always secondary losses. And as it says in Getting Past Your Breakup, you have to work the bad stuff out and work the good things in. It's a balancing act all the way along the way. This is another thing where Getting Past Your Breakup was one of the first books to ever talk about this. The only way you can get through the grief work is to do self-care. And after Getting Past Your Breakup was published, now you will notice that all these books talk about grieving and self-care. I don't know where they got that from, but I know they're kind of cribbing off my 15 years of research. But this is why so many people stifle their grief process, because without the self-care, it becomes so oppressive that you can't continue. The only way to do your grief work is to balance it with positive, life-affirming thoughts, words, and deeds. In order to do the difficult work of grief, you have to be good to you, figure out some interests, go back to some old interests, take up new hobbies, meet some new people, make plans, and build a life that you will cherish and not give up for anything when a new relationship comes along. There comes a time when you've cried your heart out and walked the floors and wrung your hands and talked about the relationship until you can't stand the sound of your own voice. You've written in your journal and stared out the window and felt all the feelings and hid under the covers and you think that you could never feel another feeling for as long as you live. You've done the relationship inventory, the life inventory, the standards compatibility inventory. You've defined new boundaries, set new limits, and started your own life. And you think you are finally got it all figured out. And you're moving and you're shaking and you're feeling better and life is grand. You can't believe it, but you're really moving on. Like you really, really, really are moving on. You come to a place where you didn't think you would get to. No more tears, no more huge feelings, no more overwhelming, no more feeling like you just got smacked in the face with a dead fish. And then one day, without warning, wham, right back in the soup. Here comes that dead fish. Your grief is saying... Hello, your psyche is saying, I know you've had a break, but I have more to share here and you're now strong enough to hear it and feel it. But you hate it. Yes, you do. I know it. You feel as if you're being dragged backwards or going under for the third time. You do not want to go back there. You push against the thought of being back there again. You try to suck in the tears, suck in the feelings. No, 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 not going to do it. Not going to do it. You feel the darkness again. You feel the despair again. And you have worked too hard to be back here again. I know, I know, I know. But grief doesn't listen so well. Apparently, there are more feelings to be felt and more losses to be processed. It doesn't have to make sense. Just know that it is. And if you don't fight it, you will keep healing. Give yourself a mental health day. Give yourself a grief day. Spend the day honoring your feelings, validating what you're feeling, journaling or talking to friends, taking such good care of yourself, and you will come back out again on the other side and go right back to your restructured life. When you feel those feelings again, it doesn't mean you failed or that you're a failure. You are not a failure. You are not going backwards. You have not lost all the gains you made. It's normal and natural to plunge back into the feelings sometimes without warning and without a reason. Sometimes there's triggers like anniversary dates or birthdays or something that reminds you. But again, sometimes there's just absolutely no clear reason. The important thing is to accept recycling as part of the process. It gets harder when you try to rail against it. It gets harder when you judge yourself as failing. It gets harder when you think that you're back at the beginning and you've lost all your ground. It gets harder harder when you start to think you've done something wrong. You haven't done anything wrong. This is grief. 
it's also important not to act on it. It's important that you don't try to avoid the feelings. Many people during recycling reach out to their ex or go on a date or do something else to keep from feeling the feeling. I know it's distressing when you think you're done with this and then you're back there once again. It's very frustrating to think that you were happy and tiptoeing through the tulips a few days ago. And now you're crying at the drop of a hat again. And you thought you had moved past all that sensitivity and all that emotionality. It is tough. It's a tough day. And hopefully it doesn't last too long. But please just accept it. Feel weepy or angry or whatever you're feeling for a day or so and it will improve. It will get better. You will be back on course in no time. But many of us almost shame ourselves that we're here again as if we had somehow failed or been woefully inadequate at the grieving thing. You have to remember, most people do not grab grief by the horns as you have been doing. So don't beat yourself up now. Don't think, oh, I couldn't succeed at the relationship. Now I can't succeed at a breakup. That is negative self-talk and it puts us in the wrong frame of mind to get through recycling. If we're recycling, we need to be gentle and loving and forgiving of ourselves and know it's part of the process. Nothing we did wrong and we do not deserve our own self-judgment. It's important to have a good cry or be irritable for a few days or just feel low energy and depressed. Eat some comfort food. Play a few sad songs. Lean into it. Pout. Make mean faces in the mirror. Stomp around the house. Pound the pillows. But know that the stay will be limited and you will be once again on the road to happier time. But if you fight it or try to stifle it, it's just going to rear its head again. This time worse because you didn't pay attention last time. Then after a while, could be days, could be hours, announce to no one in particular that you're done with recycling. You haven't done any harm to yourself, haven't broken no contact, you haven't acted out in any other ways, and you're back on your merry way to recovering from a broken heart. Please, please, please give yourself credit for having given grief its due, and now you're on to bigger and better things. Because you are. Recycling is part of healing. It's part of the process. Trust the process. Let it happen. Be good to you and know that you can do this. Now, the second part of today's podcast, continuing, is the difference between grief, self-pity, and depression. Grieving over a loss involves some self-pity, but there are healing tears and there are hollow tears. Self-pity alone leads to hollow tears And they don't really cleanse the soul. And they don't really help heal the heart. Grief work, even if it involves self-pity, leads to healing tears. The core issue in grief work is I am alone and I'm never going to have this in my life again. My life has changed and I hate it. It's a very self-centered type of work because you have been deeply wounded. Some, again, Some self-pity and self-absorption is normal and natural. You've been hurt. You hurt. You have to feel sorry for yourself in some kind of way. It's okay. A lot of grief work is, oh, woe is me. But it's also about working through all the emotions. You have to work through the anger, the pain, the guilt, the fear, the sense of betrayal and changes in your life. It can be exhausting and sometimes we're having mental and emotional temper tantrums and we might even think, why is this happening to me? That's all part of the emotional spectrum of grief. And whenever you ask, why is this happening to you? Know that loss is a part of every human life. And what do we not teach? How to deal with loss? And what is wrong with us as a society, as a world? Every single person on the face of the earth, experiences loss, followed by grief, which is a normal and natural response to loss. And we don't teach it. We don't teach it. That's why getting past your breakup has been so successful because nobody talks about this. 
doing grief work is like having a bad toothache. Have you ever had a bad toothache? I mean, most people who avoid the dentist will run to the dentist when they have a bad toothache. Because when you have a bad toothache, it's all you can think about. It becomes all encompassing. It becomes, I hurt and something has to be done about my damn tooth. And sometimes you do feel sorry for yourself. And sometimes why me, why me, why me is part of that. It's all part of the process. But the important thing is that it's not the only part of the process. As it says in getting past your breakup, yes, it's hard and it hurt. Cry, let it out. Whether you're crying because you're alone and you feel sorry for yourself or because you miss this person or the situation or you're old life, cry. Just make sure that self-pity is only one of the states that you're experiencing, not the only one. If you've been feeling sorry for yourself over a long period of time, it may be time to make a decision to turn the page and move on. You know when the bulk of grief has passed and you know when you're still feeling sorry for yourself. It's something you need to get honest about and decide cognitively that it's time to turn the page and move on. If it's been months and you've been feeling not just your grief and self-pity, but also despair and hopelessness, you really need to get an evaluation for depression. That is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's a strength to ask for help when you need it. If it's been months and you just cannot seem to pull yourself together, please see professional help and get evaluated. If you need to take medication, take it. It will not take you out of your feelings. It will be a support for you to get you to the place where you can do the grief work. It will not take your feelings away. It will just keep you out of the pit of despair. It will get you to back away from the feeling that you're so hurt you can't go on. Grief, self-pity, and depression are all part of the healing process. But please check where you are in the process and reach out to mental health professionals if you need to. Pain after breakup is inevitable, but suffering is optional. You don't have to suffer. Do the grief work, feel your pain, do your healing, and move on. If you're stuck because you've fallen into self-pity and despair, please decide to move on. If you're stuck because you're so far into despair and depression you can't move, please get help. You don't have to stay there. Please be good to you. People who follow me know that I did workshops with Stephen Levine in the 1990s. It was just so wonderful. I'd like to read you a quote of his. It says, grief can have a quality of profound healing because we are forced to a depth of feeling that is usually below the threshold of awareness. Though many of our motivations come from this level of fear of loss, yet we don't know where these volitions originate. We simply find ourselves lost in action, in anger or fear, pushing away others, grasping at what we imagine to be our safety, constantly guarding our heart. This tearing open of the heart through grief leaves us exposed to that which has caused us and our loved ones the pain of separateness. This experience of discovery that grief leads us to us is for some like going below ground level to look at the roots of a tree whose branches and twigs, leaves and flowers were all you thought were meaningful. It is the tree of life the tree of your life. I love that quote. I mean, it's just so terrific. And I've said on my blog and in my articles and in my podcast and in the Facebook group and on my book, grief is the most emotionally difficult experience a person can have. But it can also be a time of great healing, of great change and great growth. That is if you allow the grief to run its course. If you allow yourself the feelings while being gentle with yourself in the process and allowing the grief to bring you where you need to go. Pushing away the great pain is human, but you know that within the pain also lies great hope. There is great learning. There is great opportunity. There is a great life. If you know that, you will go through it easier and come out wiser. Even on the most horribly painful days, remember 
if you allow yourself your grief and allow yourself the learning and allow yourself to be brought to the places where only great pain can bring you to and you're good to yourself during this time and you insist that others be good to you as well, you will come out stronger, better, wiser, and much more self-aware. It is so important to use the pain of grief wisely. Otherwise, there's no reason for it. And suffering for suffering's sake is never a good state. You must be gentle, you must be good, and you must be knowing. Grief will lead you to great things inside you and great things ahead in your life. Please allow it to teach you what you need to be taught. Trust that grief will be your guide. Trust that grief is truly the healing feeling. And first you'll feel horrible. But Elizabeth Kubler-Ross said, if grief is not expressed normally and naturally, it will continue as an open festering wound. You don't want that for your life. You don't want the open festering wound. Too many people are walking around like that. Too many people are just scared and they don't know why. And it's because they have not allowed themselves the great pain of grief, the great learning that grief has to give you. I've not been writing and talking and talking again and talking again and teaching everything that I teach about grief for the past 20 years because I've got nothing better to do. No, I did not come back as a grief counselor after I became an attorney because there's nothing to this work. I truly feel that this work, the grief work, is where everybody's learning and healing comes from. And it is only when we're in deep pain and wanting to get out of it that we're willing to face our unresolved losses and look at our grief and say to it, okay, what next? What do I need to do next? Tell me. I've said a million times, I was in such great pain after my first separation that I would have said to somebody, you want me to stand on my head and spit nickels to feel better? Sure, I'll do that, whatever. In 12-step programs, they call it how, honest, open, and willing. And with grief, that's what you need to be, honest, open, and willing. And it hurts. And again, I cannot stress enough that self-care is absolutely mandatory. And if you do a boot camp with me, you know that I pound on grief, I pound on self-care, I pound on grief, I pound on self-care. And I've been taught through John James, Stephen Levine, all the people that I've worked with, with grief work, that you have to learn to say goodbye to a good experience. Even good experiences have to be grieved. And as I get settled into the idea of not doing boot camps next year, I'm grieving it. And I am going to pour my heart and soul into the fall boot camp because I want everybody to know what I know and to feel what I feel and to have the healing that I've had. So I really, truly hope that through the podcast and if you join a boot camp or you go to the Facebook group, you read my articles, you understand how very healing grief can be. And you can only do it when you're doing self-care as well. Please, 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 please. Do the self-care, do your affirmations, do your journaling, take care of you. And I hope to see you all on the Facebook group and a boot camp. Send me some email, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you all soon. Please take care of yourself. You can do it. Take care all. Bye-bye.